Hello. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the piecewise functions from an analytic standpoint. So let's say that we have some susceptibility model, right? Some uh, function over time that measures the infected that we have at any given time, okay? And in particular, we have, right, that we follow some particular sort of behavior, this g of t up until some magic time t, which is really sort of, we don't know there's a disease, it's starting to really spread in the population, and we realize there's a thing, and at time t, we deploy some sort of countermeasures, like social distancing or, or something, right? We get a vaccine or we find the right antibiotic or whatever it is that we're doing. And then after that moment, we might still get infected, but we are sort of getting less uh, infection and or fewer people being infected over time, right? So the uh, severity and or amount of people infected would sort of taper down as we keep going. And so we have these two fundamentally different sort of uh, situations happening where we're transitioning at time t from one to the other. Okay, and the idea is how do we actually represent this now analytically? So to do this, let's throw some numbers and some actual things on here. So let's say t happens at some time four, like four months or something, and f just being sort of when we stop uh, modeling, that's say at time six, right? So six months or something like this. And let's say that we can model g of t, that's some two to the t, and we can model that h of t, this is another function that gets us that is uh, square root of t minus four plus 16, right? So we, we have the functions that these things represent. How will we record this as a piecewise function? Well, to do that, we use this, a particular format, and the result would look something like this, right? So we would say, okay, the overall f of t, right? The actual, the actual function f of t, equals, and then we have this brace thing here, right? That a nice little squiggly brace. And then we have this sort of grid of information. And in fact, it's sort of helpful to think of it literally as a grid because sort of rows and or columns, right? So the columns or the rows sort of represent different things depending on what we're looking at. So if we're looking at the first column of stuff, those are the actual functions that we're gluing together, right? So we have g of t, which is two to the t, so that's one of them. And then we have h of t, which is the square root function, that's the other one. The second column is the domains for those respect respective functions, meaning that we're breaking this up into the zero to four domain, right? So zero to four, and then the four to six domain, right? So this four to six part here. So that's what the columns represent. But row-wise, we can also think of this as each row is sort of a function and how that function is sort of where that thing is taking place. So the first row then is going to be our g of t. That's the first thing happening. So our first one is this 2 to the t, because that's g of t, and it is applied from 0 to 4, right? So the first row is really g of t and where it applies, meaning its domain. The second one, same deal. It's going to be the h of t, right, that square root function, and it's being applied between 4 and 6, right, between the t and the f. So that's its domain, okay? So this is how we would actually write these things down in practice. Now, the actual sort of precise meaning of each piece of these things, how to compute this, this is stuff that we're going to talk about in other videos as well. But this is the sort of way that you want to think about uh, piecewise functions in general. And you might have more rows, you won't have more columns, right? The columns are always going to be, you're always going to have the two, the functions and their domains, but you may have more than two functions that you're gluing together, in which case you'll have just more and more rows, okay? All right, so what do we do? Well, we went through the analytic, sort of the algebra way of representing piecewise functions, right? That uh, f of t equals and then the open brace, which covers sort of all of the rows. And then we looked at it as this grid, right? Where we had two columns. One column is functions, one column is domains. And then the other way to think about it is each row, where each row is the function and the corresponding domain to that function, each of them being glued together as you go. So that is that.